Chinese companies, led by Huawei, break global submarine cable monopoly. The counterattack by China's submarine cable industry over the past decade is nothing short of a dramatic script, moving from a state of utter poverty to global leadership. Can you believe it? When Huawei Marine was founded in 2008, China didn't even have the entry qualification in the subsea cable field. 85% of the global market was firmly held by the three giants, America's Tyco, France's Alcatel, and Japan's Sumitomo. They not only monopolized technology but also created price barriers. At the time, if China wanted to build a short-distance domestic coastal cable, it had to import it from Japan at three times the international market price. Furthermore, the Japanese only sold the finished product, closely guarding the formula for the core material. Ultra-low loss fiber. China couldn't even manufacture a single qualified submarine cable capable of withstanding deep sea water pressure. The turning point arrived in 2015. Huawei joined forces with 12 domestic scientific research institutions, poured $2 billion in R&D funding, and a team of over 300 people toiled in the lab for 18 months. They finally cracked the two core technologies. Optical fiber drawing and Deep Sea Armored Encapsulation Creating China's first intercontinental subsea cable that met international standards. This immediately broke the monopoly. A cable that previously sold for $10,000 per kilometer could now be manufactured by China for only $3,000 per kilometer, while offering 15% higher transmission efficiency. Since then, the Chinese subsea cable industry took off. 2020 secured the Punta Campo subsea cable project in East Africa. 2022 won the bid for the Brazil Chile deep sea fiber optic cable in South America. By 2025, Chinese companies have participated in the construction of 105 global subsea cables, with a total length that could circle the Earth three and a half times. From the Africa Asia Express in Nigeria, which increased local internet speeds by five times, to the South America Asia cable in Brazil, which have data latency, the core communication cables in 32 of the world's 60 plus developing countries bear the mark of Chinese technology. Today, we will use the data and case studies from Europe and the US themselves to completely strip away the pretense of the China subsea cable threat theory. Next, you will see how did the US monopolize the subsea cable market back then? Why is Europe shouting about security while secretly cooperating? Do Chinese companies actually have the capability to eavesdrop? These answers will completely change your view of the global technology landscape. Let's first look at the absurdity of America's double standards, which have practically engraved hegemonic logic into the DNA of the subsea cable industry. In the 1980s, when the world was still in the era of analog signals, the U.S. company AT&T, armed with the cutting-edge technology of Bell Labs, led 12 Western countries to build the first transatlantic digital subsea cable, TD8. This 6, 700 km long cable connected New Jersey directly to the Isle of Wight in the U.K., boasting a transmission capacity of 560 megabits per second, equivalent to transmitting 80,000 telephone calls simultaneously. 10 times more efficient than previous satellite communication, relying on this. Digital artery. The U.S. immediately seized control of the global technical standards, construction planning, and pricing power for intercontinental subsea cables, essentially installing an American master switch on the global internet. At the time, U.S. politicians constantly declared at the U.N. that subsea cables are the common wealth of mankind and should be globally shared. But when other nations reached out to participate, the U.S. immediately changed its tune. When Japan's NTT wanted to join the subsequent TT9 project, the U.S. blocked technology authorization, forcing Japan to become a mere investor without access to the core cable splice technology. When India wanted to build a cable connecting to the Middle East in the 1990s and requested to purchase U.S. optical fiber preforms, the U.S. refused, citing national security concerns. Yet, it then turned around and sold the identical technology to its NATO ally, the UK. Even more ironic is the prequel to the PRISM scandal. Exposed in 2001, 
the USNSA, National Security Agency, secretly targeted the SEA MIWI-4 cable, which connects Europe, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia and is the data lifeline for many European countries. By implanting the quantum insert malware onto Orange Group servers, the NSA could not only intercept diplomatic cables from various European nations in real time but also pilfer the commercial negotiation strategies of Germany's Mercedes-Benz and France's Airbus, as well as the discussion records regarding EU-US trade barriers. After the incident was exposed, several European countries angrily summoned the US ambassador to protest. The US State Department early dismissed it with a phrase about counterterrorism needs, never once mentioning cable security, a stark contrast to the fervor with which they now hype up the China threat. Now, Chinese companies have just secured a 10% global market share, and the U.S. is alarmed. In July 2025, the FCC issued new regulations, completely prohibiting subsea cables containing Chinese technology from accessing the U.S. and even forbidding U.S. companies from leasing third-party cables from Chinese firms. The irony is that 30% of the maintenance parts for the U.S.'s own Trans-Pacific cables rely on China. When a Californian subsea cable broke last year, the U.S. searched globally, and only China's Haijing Sea Sentinel repair vessel could arrive within 72 hours. While U.S. politicians talk about decoupling, their actions are honest, as they know that without Chinese subsea cable technology, U.S. internet costs would skyrocket by three times. Analysis. Shocking. America's hegemonic logic of The magistrate is allowed to burn down houses, while the common people are forbidden even a lamp, has never changed. When they monopolized global digital channels with the TD8 cable, they preached. Technology for all, global sharing. Now, as soon as Chinese companies earn 10% of the market with genuine capability, they immediately slap on the huge label of Security threat. This double standard is faster than a change of face. The hard evidence of the NSA eavesdropping on the SEA MIWI 4 cable is right there, stealing European diplomatic cables and commercial secrets. Why was cable security not mentioned then? Now, they immediately smear Chinese companies. This is not a security issue. It is blatant hegemonic anxiety. A fear of China cutting off their profitable monopoly on global data channels a fear of losing absolute control over the world's data infrastructure. The rise of Chinese subsea cable enterprises, from being unable to produce a qualified cable to building intercontinental projects, is not based on conspiracy. It's built on $2 billion in R&D investment, breakthroughs achieved by a 300-person team, 30% lower costs, 40% faster construction times than the U.S., and the hard capability of the hijing vessel rushing to repair the California cable in 72 hours. The U.S. ban, while aimed at China, is ultimately self-harming. 30% of Trans-Pacific cable parts rely on China, and the transmission costs for Google and Meta will triple. Ultimately, U.S. businesses and consumers will pay the price. This practice of fragmenting the global network for the sake of hegemony will eventually be counteracted by its own short-sightedness. Europe's pragmatic choice directly undermines the U.S. position. The U.K.'s North Apollo subsea cable project, launched in 2024 with a £250 million investment, was originally planned for an American company. However, the U.S. bid was 40% higher than the Chinese bid and required the purchase of bundled U.S. terminal equipment. In the end, the U.K. secretly partnered with HMN Technologies, formerly Huawei Marine which not only lowered the costs but also guaranteed compatibility with existing European ASN equipment. Even more interesting is France's Orange Group. After being exposed as an NSA surveillance target, it turned around and signed a five-year cooperation agreement with Huawei Marine. Today, Chinese companies are involved in 40% of Europe's new subsea cable projects. European companies' acumen has leapfrogged the security trap laid by the US. They are not calculating political costs, but the concrete costs of doing business. Take the piece, cable led by China, which starts in Shanghai, connects Southeast Asia and the Middle East, and extends all the way to Piraeus port in Greece. Orange tested it, 
transmitting one gigabyte of data through this cable costs only two cents, less than the change for a cup of coffee. In contrast, the same transmission distance on the U.S. Tyco Company's Atlantic Express costs eight cents per gigabyte, three times more expensive. This is not a small difference. Europe's annual transoceanic data transmission exceeds 10 million terabytes. Based on this alone, choosing Chinese subsea cables can save the continent $600 million annually. The case of Germany's BMW is even more illustrative. Before 2023, production data between BMW's Munich headquarters and its Shenyang factory in China was transmitted via U.S. cables. Latency often left the production line. Waiting for data. An annual transmission fees cost 89 million euros. After switching to a Chinese cable, data latency dropped from 50 milliseconds to 18 milliseconds, smoothing out production line transitions. The annual transmission fee was slashed to 66 million euros, saving 23 million euros, just enough to upgrade the intelligent equipment on two electric vehicle production lines. Even within the European Commission, the truth couldn't be hidden. The Digital Infrastructure Competitiveness Report, published in March 2024, led by the EU Digital Economy and Society Commission, co-written with 20 companies including Siemens and Ericsson, clearly states. If Chinese subsea cable technology were completely excluded, the construction costs for new European cables would increase by an average of 45%, and data transmission efficiency would decrease by 20%. This would put Europe's overall digital economy competitiveness at least five years behind the United States. This is the most realistic answer. European politicians echo the US on security to appease allies, but companies are rushing to sign contracts with China to survive and earn more. In the face of hard cash, political slogans are always paper tigers.